Hey guys, welcome to our uh, first lecture for human anatomy and physiology for our muscular unit. Um, I'm a little sick right now, so I'm just warning you ahead of time. My voice is going to be kind of gross and I'm going to be a little sniffly, but anyways, we're going to jump into muscles today. I'm going to talk about some different types of muscles, what they're here for. Uh, here's my citation for where I got this PowerPoint from, modified it from. All right, so our muscular system. Um, we're learning about muscles because they're responsible for all our types of body movement. Um, all a muscle can really do is contract or shorten up and then relax and become longer. That's about it. Uh, but they are really the way we move, uh, the way we speak, the way we do a lot of things. It's all controlled with muscles. Uh, there are three types of muscles found in the body. You might remember this from, I think it was chapter four, tissues. We went through epithelial, connective, muscular, and nervous. And in the muscular unit, we talked about skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. You will need to know those for this chapter as well, but hopefully at this point, these three will just be a review. So we do have three types of muscles. Um, muscle cells are very, very, very long, and we call muscle cells muscle fibers. So you might hear them called the muscle fiber or muscle cell. They mean the same exact thing. They are this long cell that's as long as the muscle itself. Uh, a lot of them are shaped like little cylinders. Some are spindle-shaped. We'll look at that in just a minute. Uh, they contract due to the movement of microfilaments, uh, which are very small proteins within the muscle. And we'll look at that in a lot of detail in our next lecture. But for right now, don't panic too much over that. You're going to see a lot of overlapping terminology this chapter, so right away just become familiar with these. You don't necessarily need to commit them to memory, but kind of have a heads up on them. If you see myo, that means muscle. If you see mis, that means muscle. And if you see sarco, that means flesh. We're going to see sarcoplasmic reticulum, and we're going to see sarcolemma, and we're going to see all these sorts of terms. And so just so you know, if you see myo or mis, we're talking muscles right away. And sarco means flesh. So that's a good thing to know to go for the rest of this chapter with. When you look at skeletal muscles, we're going to go through all types, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth in order. Uh, so let's start with skeletal muscles. Uh, skeletal muscles are named skeletal muscles because they are attached to your bones and they are attached by tendons. Ligaments connect bones to bones, tendons connect muscles to bones. Uh, these cells are going to be multinucleate. Now they have to have multiple nuclei, that's what multinucleate means, because these cells are so, so, so very long. If you think about a muscle you're familiar with, biceps, brachii perhaps, biceps, you know, on your, on your humerus, um, one muscle fiber or muscle cell is going to be as long as that bicep. So we need lots of nuclei in them because they're so very long. Uh, you'll recall from chapter four, or you won't, that skeletal muscles are striated, which means there are stripes you can actually see on them. Uh, their contraction is voluntary, so I'm thinking right now that I need to click on the mouse and draw a line, and I'm controlling that uh, consciously. So that's a voluntary skeletal muscle, subject to conscious control. Uh, the cells are surrounded and bundled by our connective tissues. Uh, connective tissues like fascia, things like that, and of course the, the tendon that connects them to the bone. Uh, muscles can generate a lot of force, but they're going to wear out pretty quick. And we'll talk about that in the energy portion of this two lectures from now. Uh, the force that muscles can generate is not sustained for too terribly long. So let's take a look at the skeletal muscle real quick. Uh, here's your bone. Here's the tendon coming off of that bone, and here's the skeletal muscle. Uh, you know, scientists, they have to name everything, and, and the same thing goes for muscles. So we have the endomesium and the paramesium. Here they've taken the whole muscle, and you can see these fascicles inside of it. And the fascicles are groups of individual muscle cells. So they pulled one fascicle out, so you can see that. And then within that one fascicle, they pulled one single muscle cell. And so this guy here is called the endomesium, and that is around a single muscle fiber. So this little connective tissue right here is called the endomesium. And so each of these guys has a little white capsule around him. Little white capsule, little white capsule, endomesium, endomesium, muscle fiber, muscle fiber, muscle fiber, muscle fiber. And then we bind them all together in what's called a fascicle. And in that fascicle, we bind that with another layer of connective tissue, which we call our perimesium. So our perimesium is right here. It's also 
right here. It's also right here. So each one of these groups, fascicles, is bound by a paramecium. And you will need to know that. Then on the very outside here, you have an epimesium. Now epi, you'll recall, means like about, and so or around. And so here, epi on the outside is the epimesium. And that's what's going to bind multiple fascicles to one another. It's the very outside. So I like to remember it, E, P, E. I don't know if that works for you, but E, P, E is epimesium, paramecium, endomesium. And that's just how I remember it. Um, endo means within, so it's one fiber. Epi is out or around, and so that's the outside. That, that works for me. I hope it works for you as well. So there's your epimesium again. And then outside of that epimesium is the stuff that we call fascia. Um, fascia is uh, kind of a white-colored, opaque, smooth covering around the epimesium. And I wish I had something better to compare it to, but if you've ever processed an animal, a deer, a rabbit, something like that that you've hunted or a family member's hunted, when you take the hide off, it's tough to get that hide off because there's this layer of tough fascia that's all holding it together. And you can see that the muscles are covered with kind of a, a membrane. I know it's a little gross, but it's a pretty good example of it, and, and that's the fascia. So uh, do expect to see something, a diagram like this, uh, on your test. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you know, that's probably going to be there. So um, the epimesium is going to kind of blend right in to a tendon. Uh, that's the most common connective tissue attachment is the tendon. And the tendon, of course, is this thick, strong uh, connective tissue that attaches to bone. Uh, but there is another option, and it's not super common, but there's something called an aponeurosis. And an aponeurosis is basically like a thin tendon that is spread out really wide like a sheet. Um, you have one on the top of your head. Uh, you have one across your abdomen, uh, some places like that, uh, where it's a little better to have a wide sheet of connective tissue than it is to have a tiny cord. We have an aponeurosis. Uh, so where can we attach muscles? If we're talking about skeletal muscles, they have to be attached to something. Uh, certainly bones is the most obvious one and the most common. Uh, you can also attach them to cartilage, and sometimes you can attach them to other connective tissues. And so those are some places we can attach skeletal muscle. So let's switch gear to smooth. Smooth muscles are generally going to be found in hollow organs. Uh, think digestive tracts, uh, reproductive tracts, things like that. Uh, smooth muscle, you may or may not recall from chapter 4, has no striations. Uh, these cells are shaped like spindles, which is this guy right here, that kind of long skinny pointy shape. They only have one nucleus because they are not nearly as long as the skeletal muscles. Uh, these guys are involuntary. There's no conscious control over smooth muscles, uh, which is a good thing I guess because you don't think to yourself all day, digest, digest, digest. It just does what it needs to do. Uh, like I already mentioned, hollow organs are the places we're going to find these and uh, they, they tend to work very slow and they tend to work almost constantly and they don't really tire out, which is nice. You know, your, your small intestine doesn't become tired of holding food or moving food, because that would be annoying. Uh, so that's a nice thing. Here they've got it in cross-section, spindle-shaped, uh, cross-section view of the cells. There's, of course, a big lumen inside where, you know, whatever's traveling through that cavity is traveling. Could be food. <coughs> Pardon me. Ugh, warned you guys I was feeling sick. Uh, anyways, on to cardiac. Cardiac muscles, uh, only found in the heart, of course, that's the, the name cardiac. They are striated, like our skeletal muscles are. Generally, you're going to have one nucleus. There are a few with little exceptions, but for all intents and purposes, let's just say one nucleus. Uh, they are joined to other cells at these really cool structures called intercalated discs which allow them to transmit signals from one to another uh, very, very rapidly. The heart is involuntary, uh, which means you don't have to think about uh, accelerating it, decelerating it, anything along those lines. Um, it's controlled, of course, uh, hormones, nervous input, things like that can change it, but uh, you don't have to think about it really. Found only in the heart, no duh. Uh, steady pace, uh, they, they don't get tired. It doesn't get fatigued. Uh, your, your heart doesn't wear out from 
becoming tired of beating, which would be awful. So that that's a good thing that it just continues to beat uh, 24 seven as long as you're alive. So functions of muscles is, is where we're going to end, uh, why we take the time to learn about these. For the rest of the, the chapter, you and I are going to focus a lot on skeletal muscle only and learning the different types of skeletal muscles, uh, why we take the time to learn them. They produce movement, uh, to move, to speak, to run. These things all take muscles. Also, they do little things as you sit in your chair or stand. They maintain posture. All the time, little muscle contractions are going on that keep you upright, you know, that keep you uh, from tipping over and, and that sort of stuff. So that's important. They also stabilize a lot of your joints. Ligaments aren't enough to really just hold joints together. Uh, having strong muscles around a joint will make a joint much, much stronger. And also, if you get cold, of course, you can shiver, and muscles will generate a lot of heat. And you know that if you play sports, you know, indoors, basketball, volleyball, something like that, uh, you can become very hot in the gym because you're working very hard, your muscles are working very hard, and it's raising your core body temperature quite a bit. So uh, that's the functions of muscles. That's where I wanted to get you to for your first set of notes. Uh, there should be a follow along or, uh, or something uh, similar to that in the file with this video. And hopefully you were, you were able to fill that out. So if you have any questions over this, please don't hesitate to ask me. And uh, thank you for your time.